The sport of judo is a self-defense and competitive martial art form founded in 1882 by Jigoro Kano, who was a 22-year-old Japanese man. Jigoro Kano also opened the Kodokan, a famous dojo in Japan that is still open today. The main principle of judo is that a competitor's strength and size do not matter, and a smaller person can defeat a larger one just with the use of skill. Although this should mean that all sizes and shapes of people will have equal opportunity in this sport, that was not the case. Although women were allowed to practice judo, they could not train in the main dojo. They were taught in separate classes and could not compete or earn more than a 5th degree black belt, while men could earn up to a 10th degree black belt. One of the only students still living that was taught in the Kodokan by the original founder, Jigoro Kano, is Kiego Fukuda. She started practicing judo in 1935. She says the Kodokan was old-fashioned and sexist about belts and ranks. She was stuck at a fifth degree black belt level for 30 years because she did not have the same right to advance like men training during that time period. Women were viewed as weaker than men. On July 30th, 1935, in Brooklyn, New York, Raina Glickman was born, although everybody knew her as her nickname, Rusty. She was a woman whose work would play a huge part in the revolution of judo for women. Many people who knew Rusty described her as a motherly and caring person, although she was also determined and a very skilled fighter. I have her memories of, and please don't get me wrong, a very wonderful Jewish mother person, Jewish mother person to everybody, mm -hmm. and a wonderful lady, someone who I felt honored to have had a chance to meet a couple of times. Rusty was introduced to judo at age 20 in 1955, training at the YMCA. She was the only woman training with 40 men. She tried to fight in competitions, but was not allowed to because she was a woman. She realized how unfair this was and wanted to make a change so that all women could participate in these competitions. In 1956, Rusty disguised herself as a man and competed in the New York Finals with her team, winning the final match for the championship. When an official found out that she was a woman, she was forced to give back the medal that she had earned, or her team would be disqualified. She continued to compete, pretending to be a man, and won more than half interclub competitions against men. In 1962, Rusty went to Japan to practice judo in the Kodokan. It was 80 years after the sport was founded, and she was the first woman ever invited to practice in the main dojo. A year later, Rusty wanted the Amateur Athletic Union to include women's judo for competitions. She petitioned to them, but they refused her requests. In the same year, she held the first interstate judo competition for women. It was in New York, and 55 women competed. In 1965, Rusty formed two women's judo teams, a New York one and a New Jersey one. Finally, in 1976, 13 years after Rusty had first started petitioning, the first women's national USA slash AAU team was formed. Rusty was their coach. She also raised more than $180,000 for the first Women's Judo World Championships in New York's Madison Square Garden. She also helped organize the event, taking place in November 1980. It was 1981, 99 years, almost a century after Judo was founded, and women were still not allowed to go to the U.S. Olympic Sport Festival or the United States Olympic Committee training camp. Rusty filed a human rights complaint against the USOC and won. Women's judo was still not an Olympic sport. In the same year, Rusty initiated a lawsuit against the International Olympic Committee so that they would include women's judo as a sport in the Olympics. After all of Rusty's work, women's judo became an Olympic sport in 1988 as a demonstration event in Seoul, South Korea. It became a full-fledged medal sport for the Summer Games in Barcelona, Spain in 1992. 
It took 110 years, over a century from the time judo was founded to the time women's rights in judo were finally equal to men's. It was the last right that needed to be gained before women could have the same opportunities in the sport of judo as males. The amount of time that this revolution took reflected how strong-willed and tenacious Rusty must have been in order to keep trying and not give up for years and years. I believe that women receiving equal rights in judo was a step forward in all women's rights, leading to women receiving equal rights in other sports and even outside of sports. After women's judo became an Olympic sport in 1988, other sports followed. For example, nine years later, the University of Minnesota Duluth formed a women's hockey team in 1997. They won five national championships in 10 years. The men's hockey team has won one national championship in 47 years. Today, women enjoy competing and training in judo, whether they are in the Olympics or just having fun learning a new skill with friends. Women getting equal rights in judo has impacted my life because I practice judo and am part of a dojo where I am happy that I can train and get all of the opportunities that I and all women deserve. I asked some female students in my class why they like judo and why they think it is important. I think I wanna, I want to earn my black belt when I grow up and I want to keep doing it too. Do because it makes me feel like I can do whatever I want. It's something special. Judo is something special and it's just something completes me and it makes me feel happy and it's just something that will always be there for me. Well, you know, every time you win a medal or you get happy, it's kind of like a sign of victory that it gives you a self-confidence. Yeah. It's important to me to do judo because it's very empowering to me and I feel like more women should be able to be active in judo um, and martial arts in general. I think it's always been important for me um, that my kids have every opportunity in the world. And I only have daughters and I feel like they have been able to do everything and anything that a boy could do. And I want to make sure there are no barriers in their way. It's a sport that, that women can compete uh, very strongly. Right. With and right, they, give it a shot. They're very competitive. They're much faster than the men. Uh, I think some of the best judo is done by women. Today, women are still fighting for equal rights and treatment in sports. Even though a woman holds the longest record for a ski jump among women and men off Whistler, British Columbia's normal ski jump booked for the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, women will still have to wait until 2014 to get their first ever opportunity to ski jump in the Olympic Games. Unfortunately, Rusty Kanakogi died from cancer November 21st, 2009. Before her death, she received the Order of the Rising Sun from Japan in 2008. It is one of the highest honors given to a foreigner. In 2009, she was added to the International Jewish Sports Hall of Fame and awarded with a gold medal from the New York YMCA to represent her lifetime's work and replace the one that she had been forced to give up about 50 years before. I think the legacy that she leaves behind is that women can do anything in or outside of sports. She showed that if you never give up and keep pushing for what you believe in, there is no limit.